undeniable sincerity that emanates from Jimmy. Well, can I watch this then? Guys, I don't feel like this guy anymore. Not that you can see, but uh, Jimmy Fallon, I don't, I, I don't think, it, I don't think he's very funny anymore. Like me. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll go get after. Guys, I want to watch it, I want to watch it then. Jimmy Fallon, he's not just a talk. There's an undeniable sincerity that emanates from Jimmy Fallon. He's not just a talk show host. He's a friend you've known for years, inviting you into his world with open arms. Since his late night debut in 2009, Jimmy has almost unanimously been loved by fans and celebrities, but not anymore. The people closest to Jimmy, the ones he relies on the most, have come forward to reveal that his actual character behind the scenes is the total opposite of lovable and genuine. Erratic behavior, outbursts. Chat, is that all the TV, the, 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 the like like the hosts of uh, talk shows or whatever? I think all of them have been out almost like at this point. Literally all of them. Intimidation, avoid eye contact. Not Conan. Nobody told Jimmy no. These quotes don't sound like the unapologetically joyful Tonight Show host we know, but these revelations might not be shocking to some. As many people have speculated, Jimmy's nice guy persona is entirely fake. More specifically, his fake laugh. <laughs> you can't fix Wait, well, who cares though? <laughs> well, Jimmy. <laughs> guys, guys, this is almost the same thing as as um wanting a comedian to keep cracking jokes all the time if you meet him at like some restaurants or something like that. And you think he's just gonna fucking like line up with like a like five jokes for you or something like that? Like, dude, like, <laughs> like me. Jimmy will laugh at just about everything to the point well, where well, he I sounds like I'm a programmed more. laugh track being controlled by a producer backstage. That's gonna get loud a little bit. Think about embarrassment scale of one to ten. Okay. One is just like being a person walking down the street, mm -hmm. and ten is for me uh, co-hosting the Oscars with James Franco. <laughs> <laughs> Without letting Ann mention why this was embarrassing, Jimmy just bursts out into laughter when there was nothing funny about what she said. Uh -huh. And then he tries to connect my, uh, my, my right foot to my left arm. <laughs> and he's, he's trying to connect them like this. And I'm in such pain, I go uh, like that. Yeah. And, it, and, his, and his belly goes in my mouth. <laughs> Even Ryan Gosling looked at Jimmy confused as to why he was laughing so hard. They both play it off awkwardly because they quickly realize this is harmless and well, it I mean, makes them look better or funnier. Yeah, yeah, but the audience is also laughing though. Oh, wait, is, it, is there a laugh track? Wait, is there not a live audience there? There's no point in calling him out, but Taylor Swift wasn't having it. Uh, the VMAs are coming up August 24th, and they're saying I heard that Taylor Swift will be performing. Can you confirm or deny? Um, I mean, we've had a really good time today. Taylor! So, Taylor! You know, see where I'm going with this at least. Nobody ever listens to me. Oh they my gosh. Oh my god. So, what I was saying is. You're not even looking at me. Because I'm, cause I'm trying to think of what to say next. If he isn't interrupting them with laughter, he is interrupting them with other pointless talking. Uh, Taylor Swift's frustration was a little more obvious than David Spade's. Well, it was also, guys, I feel like it was a little far out too. I think that, guys, I, they didn't really warrant that, I feel like, but I don't know, maybe chill out a little bit. I but I squeaked yeah. on. You did stand up. When I did, uh, I'll tell the story. When I. <laughs> Don't worry, Don't worry, Don't worry. David just gave him a little jab, and Jimmy knew he was wrong for interrupting the comedian, so he tried to make Dave look like the bad guy and walk off. This wasn't the first time Jimmy walked off set to avoid an awkward situation that he caused. No, it's about uh, how uh, you can beat a human well, why being you, down don't to... Don't tell anyone. It's okay. Let him just, uh, just see the movie. Or not. Or not. You know what the movie's about, kind of, right? Yeah, so you don't need me. You don't need me. No, do it. No, you don't need me. No, 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 no,
Jimmy has nothing substantial to add to the conversation, but feels the need to interrupt or explode with laughter. The internet has memed Jimmy's antics into oblivion. While some say he has a huge ego and wants more spotlight for himself, it seems like he does this to maintain control. He fears dead air, a boring story, or an unfunny joke, so he jabs his way into the conversations with quick jokes or laughs in an attempt to make sure the audience is engaged, Yo, but no then shit. it ends up doing the opposite. I mean, every time a guest is talking, he leans in, stares at- Guys, this video is not it. Guys, 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 I like Patricia, guys, I like Patricia C. Uh, this video is kind of not it. Oh, I, I mean, I like the video. Uh, his opinion is not it. Dude, for him to be a talk show host, this strategy has to work most of the time. If it, it's probably gonna work, it probably works like 98% of the time. It's showing the times where it didn't work out. Well, that's what, that's what being a host is. is, is filling the gaps, throwing balls, reeling the pulling on the rope for uh, uh, on 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 your uh, your guest and making something happen and since he's always been he's been a host for a long time it's worked like thousands of times of course sometimes it doesn't work out but that doesn't mean that he's bad for it like what at them intensely, maybe reaches his arm out, and is waiting for a split second to interrupt to make sure you are entertained. The other thing that agitates people is how he showers every single guest with compliments. You're my favorite, we love you, it's my favorite movie, my favorite album, as if celebrities need any more ego stroking. Jimmy's defenders think all this controversy is ridiculous. Should he not laugh? Just sit there and be awkward? His show is supposed to be fun. He just wants his guests to be relaxed and confident in front of a live audience. This can definitely explain his overreactions to guests winning his mini games. Look. Sounds like a poodle. Yeah. A leopard turtle. Yes! Now it seems ridiculous to nitpick this from Jimmy because fake reactions have been a crucial part of TV and YouTube forever. David Dobrik, KSI, and Joe Rogan have been large contributors to the fake laughter. It, it is all harmless. Guys, 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 guys. This, this, this is like showing a clip of some fucking party we're playing Jenga with no stakes, no money involved, and, and, and some guy fucking like does some, some move and it removes a block and everybody starts fucking going crazy at the party like, dude, we're just having fun, it's not a problem, like it's harmless. After fake reaction epidemic. Okay, ah. and if you think there is, it's very like, ah. I know everything. I kind of do agree with a lot of what he says. Jimmy is a people pleaser and just wants to make everyone comfortable what is that? bless his heart. That laugh does the opposite to me. It feels like he's hiding something. And Jimmy may be hiding something. A lifetime of alcoholism. And the reason he began drinking may shock you. But first, a word from our sponsor, Underdog Fantasy. Underdog Fantasy is the easy- He was obsessed with Saturday Night Live. I'm looking at chat, I'm looking at chat. Here's a video chat, here's a video chat, here's a video chat, here's a video chat. Here's a video chat. Hey guys, this is Patricia's chat. I guess I like his videos. Patricia even makes good videos. Um, and this one is Late Nightmare of Gifalone. Did I react enough now? The program not? had been running for nearly two decades, and Jimmy was fully immersed, insisting on watching the program alone in pure silence because he hated unnecessary commentary from others. Although he could only see the clean parts his parents taped for him, Jimmy didn't miss a single sketch or punchline and remained devoted to learning as much as possible. Ironically, his parents didn't want him watching adult humor sketches, but they would let him drink alcohol while watching. As huh? long as I wasn't doing anything at night, I'd just sit by myself and I would have a six pack of Paps. Paps I don't ribbon. know if I made it all the way through the six, but I'd just sit there and watch the show and tape it. He and his sister Gloria reenacted sketches with friends before Jimmy discovered- Chat, that's gonna be the chat. Yo, Paps the ribbon, dude. It's it's pretty cheap, doesn't taste too bad, it does the job. That was like the that's what we were talking about back in the days. For the talent for impressions, hey, often it. impersonating actor James Cagney and comedian Dana Carvey. I was one of those kids who, if I hung around another kid for an hour, I was that kid. Fallon said, It was weird. I'd come home and I'd do his type of humor. I know his type of mannerisms. And my mom would say, Okay, Joey, you want dinner now? Because I'd be acting like Joey Gonzalez. From a young age, Jimmy was an imitator, instinctively copying and mimicking things that he thought were funny instead of having the drive to produce his own material, which was an early sign of being the perfect late night television host. Through hours of meticulously studying True. various comedy and musical routines, Fallon continued working on his craft and established himself as a performer at Sauger T's High School, appearing in most stage productions. It was a rush. I think it was the rush of getting a reaction. Maybe it's acceptance. Maybe it's a thing where you're pleasing somebody. I want to be friends with everybody. And if you make a joke and everyone laughs, you're like, that's it, I scored. That's what I thought making a friend was. You just oh, feel yeah, like people like you. So maybe it was that, acceptance. It seems like- Well, that's literally the opposite. Yeah, yeah, you guys, I remember, I remember talking to Dr. K about this. Remember the chat when I was talking about that? And he said like, you're kind of doing the opposite. 
Jimmy's people-pleaser mentality has been in full effect since his youth. His obsession with Saturday Night Live carried on throughout his time at St. Rose College in New York. Because when you're performing and then you're, you're doing good on that, right? People will like you for that performance, right? But that's all it is. It's the performance. So if you, if you want to keep up the act and, and keep performing, then yeah. But sometimes, like... It's, you know, it's a performance at the end of the day, it's a front, you know? Skipping parties and events so that he could watch SNL as it aired. Fallon lived for the weekends when he would regularly board buses from his aunt's house in Fort Hamilton to perform stand-up comedy sets at Caroline's on Broadway and Times Square. On stage is where Jimmy felt most at home, and his urge to make audiences laugh couldn't be ignored as he dropped out of college in 1995 to move to Los Angeles, California Classic, to pursue yeah. comedy full-time. He secured a manager who got him very minor roles in comedy films like Father's Day and television sitcoms like Spin City, but it didn't matter because his dream wasn't to become an actor. Jimmy remained fixated on joining Saturday Night Live. After two years of working on his sketch comedy and improv skills with the Groundlings, he took a leap of faith and audition for SNL but bombed. This career setback could have killed his dreams as a comedian altogether, but his obsession oh, no. with SNL wouldn't let him give up. I, when he I, landed a small role on a Warner Brothers sitcom, that. Fallon negotiated a clause in his contract that would release him if he got on SNL. The producers agreed only because they thought it would never happen. This was my ultimate goal. If I ever cut into a birthday cake and made a wish, I would wish to be on SNL. If I threw a coin into a fountain, I would wish to be on SNL. Wait a minute. If I saw a shooting star, I would wish to be on SNL. It's crazy. I had no other plan. I didn't have friends. I didn't have a girlfriend. I didn't have anything going on. I had my career. That was it. SNL is notorious is for its difficult good. audition stage. The series creator, Lauren Michaels, almost never laughed during auditions. Well, I feel like most people have none of that and not the career either, so it's kind of like, you know, I, I don't know. It would take a special talent to grab his attention. Fallon recalls three different people warning him about Lauren's lack of laughter, but he learned a lot from his first catastrophic performance. In his second audition, he would come prepared with nothing but himself and his impressions, something that he perfected over time. Watch Jimmy minutes. marched on that stage, performing a celebrity walkathon with impressions of Jerry Seinfeld, Chris Rock, Bill Cosby, and Adam Sandler. Did to I his hate surprise, impressions? Michaels and other executives could not stop laughing. I was in the room that day, says former SNL writer Tina Fey. He's one of two people I've ever seen who was completely ready to be on the show. Kristen Wiig is the other one. And Jimmy was ready like if there had been a show to do that night. Lauren Michaels informed Jimmy that his dreams were now a reality. He was going Jim to Terry's be a together. cast member of Saturday Night Live. All Jimmy could do was look at Michaels and tell him, I'm going to make you proud. He debuted beside the cast of SNL as a featured player during its 24th season in September 1998. Fallon established himself as a household name overnight, becoming known for his spot-on impressions of various celebrities and public figures. While he was living out his dream, Jimmy was also developing a scary addiction that would come back to haunt him decades later. Cocaine. During their time at SNL, Fallon and cast member Horatio Sands often drank together. Sands has described himself and Fallon as super fun functioning alcoholics, and oh. stated, that kind of goes hand in hand with SNL, some kind of substance abuse issues because it's so stressful you could easily find yourself blowing off steam a lot. Sands recounted how he and Fallon got in a couple of brawls. I've seen Jimmy clock a few people, he said. Jimmy could fight. I don't know where he learned, but he definitely scrapped with the best of them. Jimmy Jesus, working in a high okay. stress environment and abusing his health to cope is potential foreshadowing for the work environment he would create on his own show. He always planned to leave Saturday Night Live after three seasons. However, Lorne Michaels offered him a role on Weekend Update with Tina Fey, which is essentially the comedic news section that SNL covers every week. Yeah, I saw that in chat too. Yeah, this guy is, is on fucking... This guy's bugging. This is... Cocaine is not as bad as alcoholic drinking lol. Uh, this guy's bugging, bro. Actual stuff at Andy. Unfortunately, Jimmy also developed a negative reputation on SNL as somebody who can't hold in his laughter. At first, it was an innocent well, mistake that began in the famous More Cowbell sketch, when Will Ferrell wore a tight shirt that caused Fallon to break character. Every cast member was laughing during this skit because, well, it was hilarious. But that moment opened a revolving door of cast members intentionally trying to get Jimmy to break character, and he did break character. A lot. Interrupting the punchlines and comedic timing by laughing and giggling. While some thought it was hilarious, others found it insensitive and believed he was attempting to steal their spotlight and make the sketches about himself. That's annoying. That's annoying. Like that's it. The writers didn't like it. I'm not trying to do it on purpose. I'm trying not to do it. But sometimes it just got insane. I couldn't hold it in. It was just so much fun. SNL has always tried to maintain the best of the best when it comes to comedic talent. Comedians laughing at their- Guys, guys, guys I get what Chad's coming from. I'm saying it's not that bad, push a mark, or a push a mark. If you, if you do it like sometimes, it's like fine, but when it becomes like a big part of you and it happens very often, 
it, that that's fucking annoying. You can definitely see that because everybody is working on a roll, on doing something, on a on a, on a punchline or a joke, and everybody's focused on that as a structure. And you, and you think that like whatever you're doing is worth enough that, to cut it all off. That's just not. It's not the way to do it. Their own jokes Sorry. can sometimes be seen as unprofessional. In 2004, annoying. Jimmy decided to leave SNL and move into traditional acting. He signed a two-movie deal with 20th Century Fox with the hopes of becoming a prominent star in the industry. The first was a lead role in the 2004 action comedy Taxi alongside then-rapper turned actor oh, I remember that. Latifah. The other was the 2005 romantic comedy Fever Pitch alongside Drew Barrymore. Both films received mixed reviews and had decent box office performance but were not the first impression Jimmy Fallon won. Wanted. With back-to-back -back disappointments, film offers rapidly decreased as studio executives oh. grew hesitant to feature Fallon in future projects. He experienced what he has deemed a lost period, characterized by a larger-than-usual alcohol consumption and uncertainty about his future career choices. I was probably drinking more than I should have been drinking, he confessed. It wasn't like sitting and watching old tapes of me on SNL with the screen flickering in front of me. I was like, I can't figure out what I want to do. Fortunately for Fallon, the man who gave him his dream job at SNL was about to save him once again, as the host of Late Night had an opening chat, in 2009 I gotta say, after chat. Conan O'Brien was transitioning to the- I right, last pause, I guess. I gotta be honest with you guys, I don't care that much about the whole autism thing, because I feel like he's had a role for so long as, as a host. At least for me, I didn't see an effective performance ever. So I feel, I feel like blaming it on that or like scapegoating is not, that doesn't do it. Of course, it should fix the problem and she, maybe she probably should have been doing that. I'm just saying, I don't think I've ever, uh, we've ever seen it on the other side of the screen. The Tonight Show. But Jimmy didn't make the best first impression. Many quickly realized Fair. that Jimmy wasn't edgy or dark enough for late night comedy. GQ claimed Jimmy was too cute for late night audiences used to hanging out with the snarky cool crowd, suggesting he was too corny. Yeah, the cool crowd was always beyond my grasp, he admitted. Late Night with Jimmy Fallon premiered on NBC in early March 2009. The series immediately outperformed CBS's The Late Late Show with Craig Ferguson by a half a million viewers. Fallon also garnered more viewers yes. than his predecessor, Conan O'Brien. Late Night with Jimmy Fallon was one of the first late night talk shows to embrace social media and use it as an integral part of the show's engagement with its audience. Jimmy was able to connect with the youth who weren't yeah. watching TV at midnight in 2012 by regular uploads to YouTube, particularly comedic sketches and challenges with their favorite celebrities. I got these tickets uh, to the One Direction concert. Ew, I love One Direction. Do you have an extra ticket? Yeah. <laughs> Many of these videos amassed millions of views, but it was nothing compared to the dominance he would have on The Tonight Show. In early 2014, Jimmy Fallon transitioned to NBC's The Tonight Show, where he had big shoes to fill. From Steve Allen to Jack Parr, to the iconic Johnny Carson who stamped the show's legacy for 30 years, and Jay Leno and Conan O'Brien, it was now Jimmy's job to lead the most popular late night show of all time. He debuted to a staggering 11.3 million viewers, and despite all Jesus, the alleged sir. fake laughing, overreactions, interruptions, and being too corny, he dominated late night television. The show averaged 3 to 4 million live concurrent viewers I throughout mean, the I mean, particularly does, does YouTube, but you should know that fucking the Normans love that shit, dude. The Normans, they, dude, guys, it's, it's what they love, dude. Like it is what it is, and and all YouTubers that's like the bread and butter. So like years, but also embrace social media with their YouTube channel that has amassed 30 million subscribers with multiple videos and the hundreds of millions of views. A lot of Jimmy's segments mimic the format of YouTube challenges. Many of you have never even watched Late Night, but have seen tons of the Tonight Show's YouTube segments, such as lip sync battle, musical impressions, and egg Russian roulette, where he and his guests would engage in playful competitions, resulting in funny and often viral moments. His comedic sketches and style often mimicked. SNL because of his obsession and Lord Michael's production. Jimmy is like the personification of a golden retriever, and America loved him. And although the late night host is a high profile and often rewarding role, the pressure can be severe. Late night hosts are expected to be funny and entertaining every night. The constant pressure to deliver humor can be mentally and emotionally taxing. Late night hosts must stay up to date with current events and pop culture trends to keep their material relevant, them? which requires continuous research and adaptability. The aspect of balancing multiple roles can also be demanding, as late night hosts are not just comedians, they are also producers, really writers, 
and often performers in various sketches and segments. Coming up with fresh and original content night after night can be creatively exhausting, as hosts must continually innovate to keep their shows interesting. Meanwhile, late night shows are often live or recorded in front of a live audience. This leaves little room for mistakes and hosts must be prepared to handle unexpected situations. Therefore, late night hosts are very much reliant on their staff to help with research, writing jokes and sketches, making sure there are as little errors as possible. These writers and employees are Jimmy's lifeline. Oh, he's got there is no show without them. And he made a crucial error on May 1st, 2023. Uh, I wouldn't have- Yes, I understand that they have writers, people that make the jokes and set up the whole thing. But dude, in order to execute a joke and whatever, you have to grasp like the whole thing. You have to understand it. You have to be able to, to, to really be in it, right? So it's still pretty commendable to, to be able to deliver that like all the time. I have it a is, show is, for, them, for my writers and I support them all the way. They got to have a fair contract and they got a lot of stuff to iron out. And uh, hopefully they get it done. If there is a strike, do you go dark? If there's a strike, uh, yeah, I think we, we will, yeah. I think we'll go, we'll go dark. Whatever I can do to support uh, the Guild, uh, I am actually in the Writers Guild as well, so... Uh, yeah, I couldn't do the show without them, and I support my whole staff. Although Jimmy says he will support his writers no matter what, his staff says otherwise. As one of his employees took to Twitter to write, he wasn't even at the meeting this morning to tell us we won't get paid after this week. Jimmy Fallon, please support your staff. Had fun bowling with you last week but a party won't pay my rent. I'm sure many of you have heard about the five month long writer's strike in Hollywood that just ended. And the reason for the strike is quite simple. Jesus, the Writers Guild uh, of America is the- Well, somebody's not gonna bully anymore, dude. I'll tell you that much, Jesus Christ, then. Joint efforts of two different American labor unions representing thousands of writers in film, television, Jesus radio, and online Christ, media. Then. Writers are the backbone of Jimmy Fallon and all of Hollywood's content. Without them, there are no jokes, no scripts, no stories, nothing. Yet somehow, they are the least compensated, with most of them earning below the poverty line in salary. Writers make a bulk of their earnings through residuals, which is a percentage that gets paid out to them every time a movie or show is streamed or syndicated in the future. But Hollywood executives restructured the industry during the streaming era so these writers get basically nothing after the content is uploaded. And the studios are profiting tens of billions while the people who are actually creating the ideas from scratch are on food stamps. So Jimmy saying he supports his staff no matter what, but not increasing their salaries to a livable wage had them pretty pissed off, which led to a role. <laughs> Some guy just is, they just paid in bowling, outperformed by AI. Rolling Stone article that contacted Jesus. over 50 Tonight Show employees revealing what Jimmy is really like behind the scenes. Although many praised Fallon for his immense talent and comedic gifts, nobody spoke on record or had positive Jesus. things to say about working on The Tonight Show. Interestingly enough, three employees who originally worked on Late Night claim a dramatic and ugly shift in working environment occurred once they transitioned to The Tonight Show. People that worked under them felt this pressure that if you made one mistake, you were gone and would be easily replaced. From 2014 to 2022, there were nine different showrunners. This constant change in leadership gradually created a chaotic app. You know what? You know what? I think that's perfectly fine. If you're if you're running a tight ship and somebody fucks up, okay, uh, GG, peace the fuck out, dude. Like if your job is to fucking like pull a rope at a certain timing and you fuck it up, okay, get the fuck out. I don't have to tell you, dude. Like, um, I'm sorry, dude. People need to understand that sometimes certain job descriptions, certain jobs have a very small margin of error, right? And if you can't, if you don't figure the description to do this such, such job, you're not a right fit for that job. And therefore, you're fucking fired. Holy shit, that was not hard to understand. Atmosphere among Wait, staffers who express their loss in faith in senior leadership. Nobody told Jimmy no. Everybody walked on eggshells, especially showrunners. Another former employee says, you never know what Jimmy you were going to get and when he was going to throw a hissy fit. They described Jimmy's temperament, mood, and treatment of staffers as erratic. They suggested Jimmy Fallon was unpredictable, having witnessed him snap at crew members over the smallest things. They also claimed Fallon occasionally berated and belittled staffers out of frustration. Three former employees said that he berated them in front of other Sorry, colleagues and crew members. It was like, if Jimmy's in a- I gotta go back to Sorry, guys, I, I really did that something really fast. My bad claimed Fallon occasionally berated and belittled staffers out of frustration. Three former employees said that he berated them in front of other colleagues and crew members. It was like, if Jimmy's in a bad mood, everyone's day is fucked. When something was wrong, we all knew how to behave afterwards, which was just sort of avoid eye contact and don't make another mistake. The article then dives into Jimmy's SNL skit in 2000, where he did an impression of Chris Rock while doing blackface. Fuck Jimmy apologized chat. for this skit that resurfaced. Dude, this is really tough, dude. You guys, you guys, you guys, I understand what they're saying, chat, okay? If you're the host and you make a mistake, you get fucking shit on. You get clapped by everybody, the public, the whole squad, all right? If you make mistakes, 
there's somebody else's mistake back then, I, it's bro, it, it, it compounds the mistakes and it feels terrible, dude. I, I don't know. In 2020, and the article followed up this information with an employee alleging that the staff tried to sweep this controversy under the rug. A black employee claims that showrunner Granite Benderman kept asking them, what is going on with your hair? Trying to paint the picture of a racist environment behind the scenes at The Tonight Show. What? Employees claim that they experienced deteriorating health effects due to the environment, hair thinning, extreme weight loss. Mentally, I was in the lowest place of my life. I didn't want to live anymore. One longtime employee's- Oh my God, oh my God. I don't give a fuck. Uh, dude, guys, 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 guys. I, well, I mean, the reality is, is that this phenomenon happens in all work fields. I mean, it can be related to a, a billion things. Burnout, stress, uh, at, uh, uh, at home scenarios and things that are happening in your life, a, a mental illness, a bunch of things can happen. Like, I, I feel like, like a story of one person, I, I don't know, I, 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 it's, uh, kept asking them. What What's that? I'll think it's like a massive blame. It's like, guys, I, at the time I was unhappy and I was balding. It's fucking tonight's show's pro, pro, uh, fault. What is going on with your hair? Trying to paint the picture of a racist environment behind the scenes at The Tonight Show. Employees claim that they experienced deteriorating health effects due to- Okay, chat. You wanna make fun of me? Okay, guys, I'm balding right now. See, chat? I'm balding. See that? This is because chat's pressure's been so much. I can't fucking deal with it, chat. Your fault. I'm done. I'm done. I can't do this shit, chat. I'm done with this, man. I'm done. You guys, are, you guys want to type mean things in the chat? Like, like Busta? Bot, BL? But you want to take the chat like that? I'm balding. Your fault. I'm done. The environment, hair thinning, extreme weight loss. Mentally, I was in the lowest place of my life. I didn't want to live anymore. One longtime employee says they never reported their issues to HR because early on in their tenure at the show, they saw colleagues of theirs attempt to speak to human resources representatives and subsequently got fired from the show. They don't protect us, the former staffer says. They don't do anything for us. Many of you watching have probably worked in a toxic environment and have experienced similar ramifications as these employees alleged, so you can easily see this being a reality for Jimmy's show. Others speculated that this is nothing more than a hit piece. Many think that Jimmy short temper, erratic behavior, and need for- well, 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 that's bad. Well, I'm not gonna defend that. I mean, when HR sucks, I mean, it fucking sucks ball. I mean, HR I, I kinda always kinda sucks, but sometimes it could be worse. I, HR is a piece of dog shit. I mean, they should've been, they should've had an internal investigation on these motherfuckers, okay? Because HR should be working for the squad, not for the, if it, not for the institution, right? That's what HR is, is that they're on the side of the workers, but if they're kinda busted, well, they look out for the for the for the, for the company more than the people, guys. It's it's guys. It's it's a game of like push and pull. Okay, the whole point of how HR should work is that they when employees have an actual concern, is that they take the side of the employees and really listen and try to fix the problem and and, and at, at the company, right? It's a it's a way to fuck. It, it's a way for a company to delegate those tasks, right? And and to not um. Uh, uh, yeah, it's that like a, almost like a third party. It's almost like when you, that's the whole point. Oh, whatever, I'm done. Nothing this less than perfection is standard for someone putting on a, a show for millions a and millions of uh, people. This they think most of the worst allegations are against the showrunners, and Jimmy has to take the blame since he is the boss. Most people wonder why someone wouldn't just get a new job if it was so bad. Then again, Jimmy did come from SNL, which was one of the most high-stress work environments that led to multiple employees suffering from substance abuse issues. So it's not that hard to believe that he could have created a similar environment, thinking it's just show business. Reach, I'm not, However, I, I after not. rolling Stone published the article. I will not even entertain any of that. I'm just gonna. That comment was out of pocket. Article. Fallon apologized to staff members in a Zoom call. It's embarrassing, and I feel so bad. Fallon said, according to two people who were on the call. Sorry if I embarrassed you and your family and friends. I feel so bad. I. I worked at a big corporate, bro. I worked for fucking Anheuser Busch. What the fuck? I, bro, people that make Budweiser and shit. Is that, is that not is that not a corporate? That's, that's a massive company. What are you all about? I can't even tell you. We had HR, the whole wazoo, the whole nine yards, dude. We had the, the union and whatnot. You. We don't have the full apology, so we don't know if Jimmy is accepting blame for all of these allegations, for just a few, or if he is just following the command of his PR team to avoid the same outcome as Ellen. Yeah, I don't, I don't really agree with uh, some of the things on that, but yeah. Hello, everyone. You guys say janitor. Guys, janitor is like, is like the the foundation of a, of a workplace, man. 
Like that's like as as much of a job as you're gonna get, yo. What is what, what are you gonna get? It's clowning on janitor, like cleaning up the fucking building is like the like the foundation of a workplace, literally. Why well, you guys have no idea what you're talking about?